the, he was there, uh, I woke up on time this morning. I don't know where I woke up on time, but time woke me up this morning, so I'm glad to be here. Repentance. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> It was, on, it was on time. Yeah, and I, 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 if I woke up, that wasn't time. <laughs> You're right. It was on time. And, uh, I'm telling you, so I just thank the Lord for being here this morning. I pray to God. Now, we're down to the last person of the year. The last person. We won't get enough person to care for. In this year. And I'm just thankful. I just pray to God. And I, I take, if, you, if I look back over this year and everything that we've been through, I don't care about the bad time. It's still been a good year because God has got brought us this far. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read a scripture here. I'm going to ask that. I pray that we need this prayer this morning. Amen. 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 Our scripture reading will be coming from St. Matthew. The first chapter began at the 18th verse. This is season. The scripture season. And began at the 18th verse. Now the birth of Jesus was on this watch when, when as the mother Mary was responding to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was mad to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, but what? For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and, shall be, and she shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. For all their sin. Amen. Have your pen and release your prayer this morning. Let us pray. Let us follow along. Come to you, Lord, this morning. Just as low and as we know how, Lord. So thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you have shed uh, for us upon us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting us wake up last night and waking up to see a brand new day that we've never seen before. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to bless those who may be on their way, Lord, give them traveling mercy. We ask you, Lord, to bless those sick, bless those in the hospital. Oh, we don't have to call the name. We don't have to tell you the sickness. Amen. You already know. So ask the Lord to bless our family members, wherever they may be. Ask the Lord to bless this place, the woman of God is going to bring the word today. Ask the Lord to open up our ears <coughs> that we may hear. Open up our hearts that we may accept. We ask all these things in your name. In your name we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Coming for the prayer this morning. Uh, we uh, test
your nephew this. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. 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 Y
deacons, uh, choir, those are going to be removed from the window before they are destroyed and we will uh, keep them as historically for the church. But if you are interested in having one of the windows and if you are listening uh, online or you're listening on later recorded, if you're interested in having one of the old windows from the church, please contact Deacon James Knight. Uh, I would say if you can't get Deacon Knight, contact any of the deacons and trustees and they will they will uh, get you in the right direction. But please make note of that because uh, <coughs> We're, we're going to hold on to them for a couple of weeks, but we're going to move forward. Amen. Uh, wash night service. Wash night service. Uh, the body has uh, decided that we will not have in-house service for wash night. It will be virtual. Virtual service for wash night service. December the 31st, 2023 at 11 p.m. The wash night service. December the 23rd. December the 31st, 2023 at 11 p.m. And the Reverend Stephen Rice will be bringing the word on that night. So we do encourage you to be part of that. And I just want to say uh, it's so lovely to see everybody this morning. I see all these uh, lovely people coming in and all the red, the white, the various colors. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord today. Isn't it God good? Give God a hand clap of praise. So he woke me this morning and started me along my way. And I'm thankful this morning. I'm just glad to be here. And I pray that you're glad to be here this morning. Amen. Give this choir a hand clap. This morning, three and a half different in position this morning to minister how this morning he's going to bring the glory to me. To our deacons this morning. To our mothers this morning. To our trustees. To our ushers this morning. Give yourself a hand. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Isn't it good to be alive? Isn't it good to be able to wave your hand? Isn't it good to be able to say, thank you, Lord, for another day? We're going to ask this Anderson Chapel Missionary Church, uh, Baptist Church Choir, if they will uh, come and give us an opening to selection, and we ask that you will rise with them as they will give us an opening selection. Amen. Come on, choir. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen and amen. Lord, since you have moved in a mighty way, dear Lord, to allow us to do what 
we have done, dear Lord. Father God, for we know that it's not about us, dear Lord. And it wasn't in our will. It wasn't by our ability, dear Lord, but you moved in a mighty way. So, Father, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we thank you, dear Lord, for everything. We thank you, Lord, for the air we breathe. We thank you for the water we drink. We thank you for the food that we eat. We thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Father, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we say, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.
started off with us, you know, all three of them and put yourself down. God bless you, God bless you. At this time, we're going to prepare ourselves for our scripture reading and our prayer. And uh, please uh, dis disregard the spell check there, the deacon and our father. Uh, but uh, we're going to have a uh, scripture by Sister Diana Dees and his prayer by Deacon Dees Father. tried. Thou hast brought us, us into the net. Thou latest affliction upon our loins. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou brought us up out into a wealthy place. And jumping down to verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Amen. 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 Let our heart pray. <clears throat> our Father, which art in heaven, yes, sir. hallowed be thy name, thy Amen. kingdom come, Amen. thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debt to us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us for all that is evil. Right. But thine the kingdom. O oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. As long as we know how. Yeah. O oh, God, we come this morning giving you thanks, Lord. Thank o oh, God, we thank you for last night read, Lord. O oh. oh, God, we thank you for waking up this morning. Yes. Closing us in our right mind. O oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for our uh, safe travel on the way to church this morning. Yes. O oh, God, we ask you to bless the service that to go forth, Lord. Yes. O oh, God, we ask you to bless the one that comes to bring forth the word. O oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to give us the ears that we can hear yes. what you have to say up to the church, Lord. O oh, God, we ask you to bless us all. For it's your son, Jesus' name we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. Amen.
we believe, we ask that you will share with us this morning as we shall come. By what common experience do we enter into spiritual fellowship and covenant relations with one another? Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, have been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. What is our bond and union with one another? We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love. What are our privileges and duties in this church? To strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrine. What vows do we gladly make as stewards of what God entrusts to us? To contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. What gracious task do we humbly assume? We also engage to maintain family and sacred devotions to religiously educate our children. To seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. What manner of life and conversation are we solemnly pledged? To walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, bad hiding, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks and the beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. Since one is our master, even Christ, and we are all brethren, by what fraternal ministries are we to strengthen each other and adorn the teaching of our Lord and Savior? We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, and to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling in mercy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. What is our agreement when we move from this community? We more open engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. You may be seated. Bless you. Thank you again. <coughs> scripture and particularly uh, Farmer for the prayer. Uh, and just to say it's also highlighted in your bulletin, but on March the 17th at 3 p.m., we will have an installation service for Deacon Dennis Farmer. So we invite you to come out the third Sunday in March uh, at 3:30, 3, 3 o'clock for the installation <coughs> service. Amen. 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 Please be mindful of the Women's Fellowship reference on December the 16th at 9 a.m. Amen. Amen. Now we come down to a point on the program here where we have down the recognition of singers. Uh, the recognition of singers. Uh, Deacon Knight, uh, I believe the recognition of singers is uh, going to be a little bit different uh, than what we normally have uh, suspended uh, because uh, I leaned over and I asked uh, Melissa Howard who's doing the recognition of singers. And uh, she said, I thought you were. <laughs> so, with that being said, <laughs> with, with that being said, I am not prepared uh, to recognize the singers by name. Sister Ella, Deacon Knight says, you have the names. Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
See, I have some good people around me. I thank God for them. Amen. 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 So, if you don't mind, if you will, if you will come forward. Deacon Dice is going to stand with me because he, he, he said you yeah. have. The only thing I want to say was uh, just make me aware of when you're going to be allowed. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Deacon Knight. Let's give him a hand. I'm glad to have good people around. And I'm going to remind you uh, that you, who, those of you who are 65 and over, so that you will be back on Thursday, Sunday, hopefully, for our official recognition, Deacon Knight and others. So, <laughs> if I miss your name, please let us know. Um, Mother Nora Barnes, Sister Yvonne Dickens, Mother Dorothy Dupree, Brother Eugene Dupree, Mother Nebraska Dupree, Brother Virgin Edwards, Mother Martha Johnson, Sister Minnie Johnson, Mother Christine Jones, Dickie Willie Ray May. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course you got to say his name. <laughs> Deacon J. May, Sister Glenda Nobles, Sister Connie Purinton, Deacon Jay Briggs, Sister Tim Taylor, Sister Laura Willoughby, Sister Ella Wilson, Sister Shirley Woodard, Brother Bobby Wooten, Sister Geraldine Wooten, Sister Nancy Wooten, and Brother Nathaniel Wooten, Jim. Amen. Amen. Oh, I didn't miss anyone. Yes, I've seen you. Amen. Everybody, 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 everybody. Thank you, uh, Trustee Pitt, for coming forward and recognizing the names. And as she stated, please come back on the third Sunday. Uh, what we normally will do for you, we do have in place on the third Sunday. God bless you. Thank you. And I just want to say we recognize, uh, thank you to all our seniors because uh, because of you, we have done what we have been able to do. We, 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 we rise and fall on your backs. We thank God for what you have, what you have done through the years where you have brought us. Not all of you have been here every Sunday. Not all of you have done what others have done. But everyone has played a part in being who we are today. So give yourself a God bless you, God bless you. Even in the midst, if you look around and you, you see the new light and you see the paint, you see the roof, you see all that God has done for us, you see the new doors. And these are, we're thankful for you this morning for continuing to give, continue to give. Many, even on what we call fixed income, but you continue to give. You go above and beyond. And I want to thank you as pastor. I thank you for your giving. I thank you for your love. Let us continue to encourage one another. Amen. 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 We thank God for you. At this time, we're going to prepare for our offertory for uh, our worship and giving. The choir will give us an uh, offering selection after the uh, trustees and ushers shall come. We just want to remind you, uh, we're still in the season of giving. We're still, uh, if you have something that you would like to contribute to the uh, church building fund, you see what we have done, and there's still work to be done. But God has brought us a body in our way, and I thank God for your giving. And we just want to encourage you, please don't stop giving. Because one thing is really true. You can't beat God's gift. You can't beat God's gift. The more he, you give, the more he gives to you. Amen, amen. So God bless you, Trustee Penny. Uh, this, this time we'll take about a public offering. Uh, we only take on one offering, and the ushers are in charge.
You know her, you know her as a friend, you know her as a sister, you know her as a counselor, you know her as a guide, you know her, some may know her as a mother, grandmother, daughter, a niece, a whomever, however you know her. You know that she cares about the word of God. She feels the word of God. She feels the the a tug upon her. She feels the pain when when people when people act out of sort of the way that God has called us to act. But I ask you this morning to lay aside again as we pray this morning every way that sin that does feel so easily beset us. Let us look past the person and let us focus on the word of God that we may receive a word from heaven this morning because we come to lift up the day of Jesus Christ. We come to give him the glory. We come to give him the praise. Because if it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side. Where would we be this morning? So let's give God a hand and have a praise. And as we see Minister Howard, I say, preach the word, Minister Howard. Thank you. 
trust the process. See, church, when we trust the process, there are some things that's going to happen within that process. A lot of people use that, pro use that as a slogan. You'll see it in interviews, you'll see it on social media campaigns, you'll see it in hashtags, and much, much more. But when you hear the process, it means that eventually you're going to have to activate your faith and believe that there's a divine plan for your life. Even when the process is hard, when the process is painful, during the good times, during the bad, you're going to have to trust the process. And sometimes during this process, you won't even understand it. You won't even understand when events are unfolding and unraveling all around you. The process is great when things are going well in your life. But what happens when all hell breaks, breaks loose? What happens when life be lifey and it seems that God don't even hear you? When it feels like your back is against the wall? Maybe you have allowed fear and doubt to alter your spiritual walk. Yeah. with God and it feels like you're at a dead end road mm -hmm. when your vessel is empty you don't pour it out to into everyone yeah. but no one is pouring into you right. what happens when you feel like God is just not answering your prayers yeah. but Lottie, Dottie and everybody is living like hell and it seems like they're being blessed yeah. maybe you're praying to God that he'll heal you and then you go to the doctor and the diagnosis got worse. And the doctor said, there ain't nothing else that I can do. Or maybe you're behind on your mortgage and your home is now in foreclosure. Maybe the only vehicle that you got to drive just broke down and you don't have them extra um, funds to get it fixed. And then on top of that, the people are threatening to come pick it up if you don't make your payment. Maybe you're next in line for the promotion on your job, but then they change the job criteria. Well, maybe you've been praying for your spouse that they accept the Lord. Or maybe you're just praying for a spouse, but God ain't let you cross paths yet. <laughs> you want somebody that will walk with you the last mile of the way. Well, mm, maybe you're in counseling for an abusive relationship and every time you try to leave that trauma bond of emotion or financial pressure of being alone keeps you trauma bound in an unhealthy relationship. Well, Maybe you've been calling the admissions office at a university and they ain't returned your call. Well, Maybe you have one of those moments when you question God, but it seems like nothing is working out for you. It is in those moments that God shows us he is in control. Yeah. That we must trust the process. We may wonder how do I trust the process when obstacles is in the way on every hand. I'm so glad you asked because the message this morning is not only for you, but it's definitely for me as well. As we look at this text in Luke 18, Jesus opens with telling the disciples they should always pray and not give up. See, he's preparing them for what's going to happen ahead. But how many of you know that Jesus loves to use a parable? Right now, when he used this parable, when he used parables, it's to teach a lesson. And no matter what you're going through in life, every process there is a lesson. And in every lesson, it should help develop you to be a little closer with God. And in this text, Jesus used the illustration of a widower who was appealing to an unjust God. I mean, an unjust judge. I'm sorry. So that brings me to my first point. We need to pray when obstacles come our way. When we're faced with obstacles, we need to pray and remain faithful. In a real sense, he was telling these disciples that they must trust an unknown future to a known God. He was preparing them not to be so consumed in what was going on around him, but to develop a prayer life. So when the difficulties and the trials of life come through, they're going to be distracted, but they knew to pray. They had the word hidden in their hearts. 
Mm. When faced with trials and tribulations of life, stop going to everybody and learn how to go to the Father Himself. Church, yeah, I don't know if you know, but prayer changes things. Yeah. And we got to learn to pray persistently yeah. because God has a purpose for our pain. Yeah. He has a reason for our struggle and a gift for our faith. Yeah. If we trust the process and depend on him, we can't get discouraged every time trouble comes. We can't get discouraged when... When we turn our backs against God, because if we're praying in those moments, God will hear our prayers wow. and and He'll answer, not according to our will, but according to His will for our lives. In the text, Jesus continues with the conversation with the disciples by telling them about a persistent widow and an unjust judge. In a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. And if we look at that just a little bit closer, we'll find in the, in the first century parable, this parable can be used right now. Mm. We got mothers and sisters, grandmothers, fathers, Constantly and persistently going in and out of the courtroom, yeah. seeking justice for their loved ones, wow. seeking justice for their children, yeah. seeking justice for their siblings, yeah. and seeking justice for this one and that one. Yeah. And then there's a judge who discredits their claims. Mm. The widow had all odds against her. Well, because as a widow, she had a low social economic status. Yeah. Right. And I don't know if you know, sometimes it's depending on your status. Right. Mm -hmm. Who's going to follow you? Yeah. It's depending on your status. Yeah. Who has your back? Right. It's depending on your status, yeah. how far you get. Mm -hmm. So this woman, as a widower, Deacon May, mm -hmm. she had a low economic status. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yet, every time the doors of the courtroom was open, well, she made her way through. Come on. <laughs> but with Jewish law, she had no legal standards. Well, mm. as a widow, as a woman, mm. she was considered weak, mm. <coughs> isolated, well, impoverished, and full of despair. Jesus. However, despite these facts, this widow has some distinguishing characteristics. Mm -hmm. This widow, she was persistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we would get persistent about the Lord, yeah. we'll see some things happen. Yeah. Wow. This widow, well, she was focused. Yeah. And if we was focused yeah. on the Lord, yeah. we'll see some things happen. Yeah. Wow. This widow, well, she was determined yeah. to get the justice that was due to her. But if we as Christians and would get determined yeah. about what is due to us, right. we can make some things happen. Right. If we would just come together yeah. and just pray about that right. thing, yeah. we can make some things yeah. happen. Yeah. But instead, we're getting this click. Yeah. We're getting that click. Yeah. And we won't pray together. Yeah. We won't pull together. But this lady said, no matter what I said that, no matter the delay, I'm determined to get what is due to well, me. Yeah. Mm. She went every time the court was in session. Well, Not that she just go and just sit there and be cute, but she was visible. Yeah. She was vocal yeah. and she was vigilant yeah. and she demanded her justice yeah. because she knew that she was entitled to it. Yeah. Now if we <laughs> would just take a page from her playbook on how to remain persistent. But our faith is wavering. And when things don't appear to be working in our favor, if we relied on our faith the way we rely on life body and everybody, if we relied on the word of God, if we have it just hidden in our heart and just remain persistent, we can make some things happen. If I could just paraphrase just for a little bit, I can just imagine 
this winter, Sister Janice, yes. every time the court the, the court is open, That's she's right. walking in there. You got the DA sitting over there. Yes. You got the judge sitting over yes. there. You got some gossipers yes. that's just in the court. Just so they can go back and say who was in court and what they was in court for. I can just imagine the judge when he come out and he look at the bailiff and he said, Lord, she here again. Come on. 
we get weary. Mm. Our prayer life get a little shaky. We get discouraged by all that's going, going on. We stop coming to church. We quit this and we quit that. But it's during the darkest moment. We have to remember that no matter how bad it looks, no matter how hopeless it is seen, no matter how devastating the deliverance, God is faithful yeah. and he is just. Yeah. It's going to be something. Come on. We need to learn to trust yeah. That's right. the process. Yeah. It's done these moments yeah. when we have to remind ourselves yeah. God is yeah. our yeah. and our maker. Yeah. God is yeah. our yeah. opinion yeah. and our yeah. end. It's during these moments when we have to remember yeah. God has been given up on us. Yeah. It's us that has given yeah. up on us. Yeah. He said it never leave us no forsaken. But we got to persistently yeah. pray. And not only do we have to pray, yeah. we have to be we have to patiently wait. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the text in the first fourth verse. Yeah. We find these words. Yeah. For sometimes he refused. I need y'all to stay right there with me. Yeah. I'm gonna read it again. From the text. For sometimes. He refused. Mm -hmm. So that let me know that the widow had to wait some time. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm pretty sure in her natural sense, she came discouraged mm -hmm. and disappointed every time she went to see that judge. Wow. Yeah. He autom automatically gave her a continuance. Mm -hmm. He might make, let him wait a little minute, a little while in the line, but then he, he, we, we done continued. I can only imagine in the midst of her pain and in the midst of her sorrow, mm -hmm. all she could do was trust the process. Well, yeah. the process. Mm -hmm. Believing that eventually her breakthrough was going to come through. Come on, man. Come on. Whenever we feel like we're in a holding pattern in life, mm -hmm. God wants us to know that he is God. Yeah. And not just any God, but God is divine. Yeah. Happy. Even if you take several soul, it starts out yeah. as green. Mm -hmm. But eventually, when you put it together, mm -hmm. you can have something nice. Yeah. But it's a process that it has to go through. Yeah. And yeah. 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 here, I got this one to go, so it's a little shiny, a little blurry, but I can still see me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue. Mm -hmm. We see in us, mm -hmm. but we don't see what God. Amen. Is making mm -hmm. love us. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Mm. <clears throat> Sometimes in that wait, mm -hmm. God is taking that little time. Yeah. And he's making Come something on, out of it. Come yeah. on. And then when it get nice and good, mm -hmm. he done made something nice out of it. Yeah. 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 That's it. That's what he's doing us. That's yeah. right. But we have to wait. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have to wait. That's it. God isn't just here to, to just defend us, mm -mm. but he's developing us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as he develop you, before, as he develop you, he's trying to deliver you. Yes. So when he delivered you into a wealthy place, you can handle what he delivered you yes. into. Yes. Yes. What do I mean? This means that if you are looking for a job, he can open the door. Yes. 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 The door of opportunity to be open to you. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for that boo, that life partner, mm -hmm. <laughs> he can cross them paths. Mm -hmm. If you got an unsaved life partner mm -hmm. <laughs> and you've been asking God to just save them, mm -hmm. woo, mm -hmm. if your life in the home, <laughs> woo, if you well. set that example, <laughs> guess what? Eventually, they'll come in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But rest assured, it's all part of the process. Yeah. When our faith is tested and obstacles block our, sometimes we let obstacles block <laughs> our blessings. Yeah. Yeah. See, but if we if we realize that we have work to do, yeah. one, if we persistently pray, mm -hmm. we wait patiently, yeah. And remember that the teacher is always quiet during the test. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody didn't catch that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the teacher mm -hmm. 
is always quiet during the test. And, 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 and so while the teacher is quiet, we got to have some patience. Yeah. And how many of you know that waiting on God is not always easy? Yeah. It requires some patience. Yeah. Especially when we're running low on our faith. And we find ourselves in a place where despite our best efforts, despite all our decrees, despite the money we have in the bank, things don't seem to be working out for our people. But when we wait on God, we, yeah. can, we can't underestimate what he's doing in our waiting season. Uh -uh. There are some people in the Bible whoo, that we can ask about the wait. Yeah. Well. That's ask Job. Uh -huh. Job knew something about praying and waiting on the Lord. Yeah. He said, all the days of my life, of my appointed time, yeah. I'm going to wait yeah. till my change comes. Well. And if God has confirmation in that church, Daniel, Daniel waited. Even the Lord closed the mouth of the lion because of his faith. Oh, then there was Lazarus. God raised him from the dead. Oh, and then you had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown into the fire furnace. He is seven times harder than normal. But when the king looked, he saw four tigers mm, walking unharmed. But they waited. Because they knew who they served. Yes. Oh, you asked Moses how he parted the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. But what really get me when you ask Abraham, well. he prepared the wood and found yeah. his son Isaac yeah. to be used as a burnt sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine. Woo, I can only imagine. God, you want me to take my son woo, to use as this, as this offering. But how many of you know he done what he was that what was asked of? Yeah, that's right. And there was a ram mm -hmm. in the bush. Right. See, that lets me know that God's timing is not like our time. Yeah. Uh, he may not come when you want it, yeah. but he's always on time. Y'all ain't got a witness because I know yeah. on this morning that if you trust the process, yeah. if you pray persistently, yeah. and if you yeah. wait on God, yeah. you'll win every time. Yeah. See, in my Bible, Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8, said, Ask, and it shall be given yeah. unto you. Seek, and you shall find. But knock, and it shall be opened unto you. But everyone, not just you, Mickey May, not just you, Sister Maria, but everyone that asks it receives it. And he that seeketh it, find it, and to him that knock it, it shall be opened. Galatians 6 and 9. If we look at the International Standard Version, let's not get tired of doing what is good. But at the right time, we will reap a harvest, and we do not give up. Friends, let me share something with you. Can you say with me, delay but not deny? Let's say, delay but not deny. God's timing is always perfect, and His presence is always constant. But as we pray persistently, as we patiently wait, we have to passionately praise. Yes. People have said, don't take all of that. Well, but they don't go to hell that I've been through. Yes. So this praise that I got, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Well, if we look at the scripture again, we learn that the, the judge really had no interest in helping us out. But in the providence of my almighty God, something happened. If we go back to the verse, it says, but finally, yeah. woo, he said to himself, even though I don't feel God, Jesus. I don't care what other folks think, mm -hmm. think about this little, I'm sick of all of me. I'm going to just give her justice yeah. that she keep asking for. Mm, yeah. woo. I don't know about you, but Jesus. two words really stuck out. Mm, yeah. But when yeah. I mean, you got a conjunction mm -hmm. <laughs> with the word but, but, it means that something happens right. after a long period of time yeah. that you didn't expect. But finally, your wait is over. Yeah. Your breakthrough is on the way. Yeah. Yeah. But finally, mm -hmm. that finance manager. 
got your paperwork up there. So your house won't be foreclosed. Well, Maybe that hiring manager know what you can do. So they overlook the criteria yeah. and call you in. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe because of the life that you live in front of your family that said, I'm tired. Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. What must I do to be safe? Wow. Maybe that baby that's going through yeah. with that mental illness that, that God just took it off of and said, I know. Even when I was going through, I knew how to go to God. I knew how to pray. Satan thought he had a better. But God said, you're my child. I'm going to use you. But in that, it was a process for the family. Mm -hmm. Maybe you waiting on your boob, your bow ass, and God allowed you to cross paths. Yes. So they're going to walk with you yes. the last mile mm. of the way. Yes. But then finally, maybe if we look at football just a little bit, yes. let's go there. Maybe the commanders, maybe the cowboys oh, yeah. will make it to the playoffs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah. we won't be sitting home. <laughs> but we really got to trust yeah. the process. That's right. Woo. But at the long and physical Delay. <laughs> this lady persistently prayed. Yes. She pers she waited, and she had a praise on yes. the inside. Yes. And then this judge finally gave her, finally gave her yes. the justice yes. that she deserved. Amen. So she walked out to Jesus. Yes. Uh huh. They thought they were, he was talking about the church. Yeah. So he done it. Yeah. So he done it. Yeah. So, he done it. Uh -huh. so I could see her walking yeah. Yeah. in that neighborhood. Uh -huh. yeah. Woo! Talk about me now. Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. He done it. He done it for me. Yeah. Not the judge, yeah. but my God. Yeah. He done it. Yeah. Now what you got to say? Yeah. You said that my God won't come in through. He done came through for me. He done it. I told y'all that I had my public defender in me. I told you that his credentials were better than all y'all. They got them BS better than all y'all. They got them left. So guess what? He mastered it all. He ain't never lost the case. That's why I could stand and I could believe. That he was going to do it for me. He done it for me and me. And he done it for me. Yeah. Woo. I can hear this lady patiently pray. She waited. And then they wanted to come into the church and just sit down. And look cute. That lady said, after all, he done for me.
on the inside. Yes, Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. I say to you on this morning, trust the process. The process. Mm -hmm. yes. Trust yes. the process. Yes. Amen. Amen. But this morning, trust the process. God has never failed you yet. He's never failed me yet. He's right there by our side. He said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Will you trust the process this morning? The choir is going to give us an open uh, an invitation of selection. You heard the word being preached this morning. And did not God show up this morning? I've heard her preach many a time. He can make, but she's moved. God moved her to a different level this morning. And God is working. Why? Because the process is going forward. You know, you have to trust the process. Amen. When you first time you begin to read, you couldn't read like you can now. The first time you sang, you may not have sang like you sang now, but the process, trust the process, God is bringing you through, no matter what the world may say. And when he blesses you, you can't sit down. When he brought you out of the mark and my clay, placed you on a solid rock, you ought to be able to tell somebody Hallelujah! It was God. It was God. That brought me to it. Was it my bank account? Was it my good looks? Was it my clothing? Was it my education? But it was God. That's the part you say. If there's one this morning who do not know Jesus in a part of your sins. We extend our attention to you as your Father and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Give us your this morning. Will you come? Will you come? Christ in your feet. Christ in your feet. Think about all that God has done for you. Jesus.
Just remember why Jesus did what he did. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verses 12, begin to, at verse 12, it says, The first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples say unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? Mm -hmm. And he said forth two of his disciples and said to them, Go ye into the city, and where, and there shall meet you a young man, you a man carrying a pitcher of water, following him. Luke account said that when Jesus told them to go and prepare, they asked the question, where will we prepare? Mm -hmm. But Mark here says that Jesus told them to go, but nevertheless, both accounts still say you'll find a man mm -hmm. carrying a pitcher of water, which was highly unusual in the day. And this was unusual because also Christ was about to do something unusual. For the scripture says that scarcely for a righteous man will one die. But yet Jesus died for the sinful man. Here we are. And he said, and whatsoever ye shall go, whatsoever ye shall go, say to the good man of the house, the master said, where is the guest chamber? Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he will show you a large upper room, mm -hmm. furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them. And they made ready the Passover. Mm -hmm. You know, the, pro the disciples, they had to trust the process in this morning. Mm -hmm. They heard what Jesus said and they had to follow because there surely been somebody saying, you're going to find a man carrying a fish. It's not going to happen to us. But trust the apostle. When God commands, we have to trust the process. But they found as was said. And they dined within the process. And in the evening, he cometh with the twelve. And they did, they sat and did eat. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you shepherds, that which eateth with me shall betray me. Mm -hmm. And they began to be sorrowful, and to say unto him, one by one, is it I? 
another said, Is it I? And he answered and said unto them, It is he, the one of the twelve, that dippeth with me in the ditch. Yes. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him. But woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good it were for that man if he had never been born. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave to his disciples. Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the rest. For verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine to that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Paul picked up the writing and First Corinthians and his curse, the church of First Corinthians, how we should partake of this supper because there was many that had turned into a love feast. They had lost their way. And we need to be reminded just what Christ did for us. Minister Howard is going to read. For there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone take it before other his own supper. And one is hungry, and another is drunken. What have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye that the church of God? And shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup which he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament, and my blood, this do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and let and so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this call many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. We are chastened so that we are not condemned with the world. You wonder sometimes why you have to go through what you're going through? Because God's trying to correct you so that you don't be condemned with the world. So we ought to thank God for the chastisement. I know it doesn't feel good. I know we don't enjoy it. But we ought to thank God. Why? Because he loved us so much that he has not given us over this morning. Because it's a terrible thing to be given over to a reprobate mind. The body, the bread representing the body, mm -hmm. the wine representing the blood. Mm -hmm. This all we do in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. How he suffered and died on the cross for us. Mm -hmm. Jesus took the bread and he blessed it. He took the wine and he blessed it. We are not able to do as he did. But we are able to go before the Father and ask him to bless this bread and to bless this wine. As Deacon May shall offer a prayer. 
We up there are those who know that you have done something that hinders you from partaking of this bread and this wine. Take it to the Father. The reality of it is all of us are going to take it to the Father. Amen. Because there's none like it. As the officer shall distribute, we do ask if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, please let the plate pass before you. But Jesus, he took the bread after he had blessed it, he gave to his disciples, and the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm gonna stay under the blood. I'm gonna stay under the blood. I'm gonna stay under. 
Jesus met the upper room with his disciples. He took the bread and the wine. <coughs> he break the bread he gave to his disciples and say, this is my body, which is given to you. Eat ye all of it. He blessed the wine and gave to his disciples and said, this is my blood. Drink ye all of it. The blood of the New Testament. He said that I will no more drink of the fruit of the vine than I drink it new with you and my father's as often as we do this, we do so for his death and his suffering till he shall come again. I'm sure she's coming again. Amen. We're suffering to God for our sins till he's coming again. Will you be ready? After they had died, they sang a hymn and they went out into the Mount of Olives. We do not have a Mount of Olives to go into. But we do have our houses, our homes, our jobs, our schools. Wherever we may go, let us share of the goodness of Jesus Christ. Let us share the gospel. That Jesus died for our sin. That the choir shall give us a closer selection. If you will, just reach out and touch your neighbor's hand. And let us join together. I am free.